Tonight on the Fanatic Forum, we are talking adaptations. We're talking page to screen, game to screen, comic to screen, whatever the case may be here. We got a lot of answers on this one, and of course, we have our own opinions as well. Plus, we got other stuff to talk about. But first, we got to talk about this. Happy Friday, and welcome to the Fanatic Forum. I'm your Fanatic and host, George Bueller, and this is my lovely wife, Mrs. Fanatic, Michelle Bueller. Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Friday. <laughs> so how are you doing, huh? I'm okay. Um, our uh, spring break is far away. <laughs> Too far. It needs to, get a, needs to, get a it needs to be like now. But... Take that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I did have a... Uh, kid this week that uh, didn't come to school, but he was on the network and I could see what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And he was watching videos of spoiled milk jugs being opened. So <laughs> the future. There you go, folks. Mm -hmm. We're in good hands. So, yeah. <laughs> so there's that. That was Monday. Okay. So, well, wow. it's, it's just been a, it's been an interesting week. So how about you? Uh, good. Uh, basically, I've been doing a lot of uh, auctions on whatnot uh, for Clobber and Comics. So I've been mm -hmm. working with that a lot. Uh, that's been a lot of fun here. And, of course, uh, Clobber Comics has our second location uh, opening up this coming Wednesday, yeah. March, uh, March 15th. So in Shepherdsville, Kentucky. So right across the street from the Walmart. You know exactly where it is. It's like right off the highway there. So the uh, store looks beautiful. Yes, it does. We yeah. were looking at the pictures and stuff. It looks really great. Yeah, and uh, on top of like a lot of, you know, of course, new comics, art for sale. You know, he's got back stock and stuff like that. Lots of like toys. And especially if like you're like Godzilla and other like kaiju fans and like wrestling and kiss and a lot of stuff. He got like a lot of merchandise from a particular seller. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of cool stuff he's got in there just on that, you know, note as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, March 15th, uh, my buddy Bill Hood is also going to be there. Uh, doing a uh, store, you know, art signings. He's got his art for sale as well. Uh, he's got some uh, blank covers uh, that uh, we gave him, and so he did some art uh, on those as well. So, That's yeah. so neat. Yeah. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun day. And Yay. yeah, Shepherdsville has finally got a comic book store. Yay. <laughs> Branching out. Yeah. Well, it's they, they. You know, usually they have a lot of uh, comic conventions in the Paracord Springs Center. Mm -hmm. That's another big event center, and they have like maybe like three to four a year. And so they're successful, you know, conventions, you know, mm -hmm. like the Halloween Comic Fest. And uh, there's the, of course, they have a G.I. Joe show. It's in the uh, winter as well. But yeah, they you know, all kinds of, you know, local vendors and the the guy runs the place. Uh, he also, you know, he has got his own, you know, comic stuff he's got for sale. So mm -hmm. they, they all go well, but it's like there's no shop in yeah. Now there is. And now they're Yeah. yeah. Uh, we saw a fun trailer the other day for Ooh. a movie coming out later this summer. Yes. Uh, it's uh, No Hard Feelings uh, with Jennifer Lawrence. Um, and there's like a bunch of people, like Brett, uh, Matthew Broderick's in there too. But basically, she's like an Uber driver who kind of just has like her life is just kind of just trash, it seems. Uh -huh. And she loses her car, so she can't work anymore. So she is hired by these parents to basically, you know, kind of socialize her kid up a little bit. Date is what she says. Date, date, date. yeah, so. hard. Yeah, date, date him hard. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I mean, you know, he's a smart kid, but doesn't get out, doesn't talk to girls. He's going to be going to college next year. So, mm -hmm. yeah, apparently that's that's. Uh, so it's it's you know a hard R comedy, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it looks hilarious. Yes, so, I, mean, I I just love her. I mean, I just love that she's from here and that she's become such a you know she's she's good in drama and she's good in comedy and so mm -hmm. I I just love her. Yeah, so, so yeah, so okay. I, and we'll yeah. be checking that out. Yes, definitely. I mm -hmm. can't remember what, when that comes out, but yeah, it's in the summer. So, yeah, I can't remember either. But anywho, so oh, hello there, Marianne saying hello, Michelle, and hello, George. Hello, Marianne. Hello. Very nice to see you, dear. 
So uh, the show today, we are talking about our favorite adaptations here. So, and of course, you know, the top, this is a wide topic here because there's all sorts of, you know, ground that can cover. You're talking about like, you know, a book, you know, it's been turned into a movie or TV show or, mm -hmm. you know, video games and, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, so yeah, so lots of topics, you know, what broad range here. And uh, we have our own things that we've, you know, brought to the table as well here. Yeah. Uh, plus, we've got a lot of answers too. So, mm -hmm. so let's get to your first one here. Okay. So my first one is The Shape of Water. Nice. Um, and they turned it into a movie, but I didn't know it was a, hold on. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to do. Um, <laughs> Creep around the picture there. Yeah, what's that? Um, I didn't know that this was a book mm -hmm. until uh, we, we watched movie. the movie, yeah. and it was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And there was, I just, it made me like feel things and ugly cry and all kinds of things. And I wouldn't anticipate that that would happen with a. Mm -hmm like a fantasy book of a woman falling in love with a merman merman mm -hmm. um again <laughs> this gets what we call it huh? yeah but um <laughs> just the the uh, and the back of it says experience a connection beyond words so the main character is mute mm -hmm. so she communicates through sign language and uh just how um what's the actress's name do you remember is it sally something i can't, uh, I can't remember. remember but she did such a great job mm -hmm. at delivering these lines with all that emotion, right. you know, using ASL and just the creativity of it all. And, you know, you just wouldn't expect yeah. all those little things to happen in the twists and, and, you know, the, the stuff at the end that I don't want to ruin because, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, when we saw the movie and then I was looking around and I was like, um, Hi, didn't know <laughs> I was going to love this. So yeah, I um I think I've read this twice so far. Yeah. But it has like really pretty um you know these little like sections, uh, section breaks and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um it's just a great it's a great love story that you wouldn't expect. Yeah. And well, yeah. cool. And I wonder, you know, because of course, you know, the book was written by Guillermo del Toro uh -huh. and, the, and Daniel Kraus. And Daniel Kraus. And then, of course, the film was directed by del Toro as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm just wondering, you know, how does the screen to, you know, page translation go? Here? Well, and that's the thing that I hate. I wish I could like unsee the movie mm -hmm. and read the book first because every time I read a book and then watch the movie, I'm like, hmm, you know, kind of, that's not how I saw that character. So mm -hmm. I can't read this and not see the actors yeah. in it but the way that it's worded and the way that the story is it just sucks into your it just pulls you in and so i kind of forget that i know what these people look like and or what somebody thinks they look like mm -hmm, right um yeah. yeah but uh no if i forget if i try to oh yeah yeah that happened in the in the book and oh was, um but yeah I, I think it's a great um it's just a great adaptation all the way through. There's like cute little pictures of, of the merman and uh, it's just, I just love it. Mm -hmm. so. Mary Ann's got a question mm -hmm. on the air saying that uh, wasn't it supposed to be uh, a remake of the creature from the black lagoon? I don't know. That's a great question. I will have to check that out. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it kind of makes sense that it would be, but of course they, you know, take it where actually the, you know, the, they are, become a couple in some way shape or form mm -hmm. you know it's not like an abduction or anything like that like yeah. the creature from the black lagoon is you know, yeah so, <laughs> yeah so yeah okay well, cool yeah so of course yeah, I, i've never read the book before but yeah so the, the movie is beautiful so mm -hmm. um well a couple of uh other answers we've got uh one, one cute one uh jay martin said that he loved the uh super mario uh TV show, and that was the one from the 90s that starred Captain Lou Albano and mm -hmm. the, the live action and the animated you know, show. Yeah, I so. just think of him as the rubber band stapled to his face <laughs> in the Cindy Locker videos. And that's that, the first time I'd ever seen him. I'm like, why is the rubber band on his face? Basically, that was his gimmick in wrestling. I don't know how that got started. Yeah, but because he was always a I didn't know he was a wrestler at that time because I didn't. Yeah, I mean, he was a wrestler care. for uh, uh, in his youth and then. 
mostly what he's known for is basically being a manager. Mm -hmm. But he's always a bad guy manager. Yeah. And but he basically he was a loud talker, very boisterous, and mm -hmm. you know, could talk fast too. So he, he had a lot of personality. And of course there were bands on his face was like, why do you say I've ever been stuck to his Yeah, face? that I was like, is that just a Cindy Lauper weirdo thing? I mean, you know, yeah. she's very eccentric, but and Cindy no, Cindy but, grew up on wrestling. So. Okay, yeah. But um yeah, that's how I see it. That's I will always see him, you know yelling at her in the kitchen mm -hmm. <laughs> in that video and of course like you know she was in a couple of her videos mm -hmm. uh and then she appeared in the first wrestlemania where she basically was uh, escorted out uh, at the time uh, women's champion wendy richter mm -hmm. and then the opposing uh wrestler who wendy richter beat came out with captain lou albano mm -hmm. so it kind of brought that whole thing full circle and everything mm -hmm. like that but yeah wendy grew up a wrestling fan her dad watched wrestling mm -hmm. and they grew up in new york area so she knew who captain lou albano was well, so nice. it just it, yeah so she's a wrestling fan always has been i think so yeah, yeah that's why she's in the wwe hall of fame well that's cool yeah there oh. you go <laughs> i love her too uh schaefer Tolliver also had another uh very interesting answer his answer was the edison frankenstein which of course is one of the very first films, you know, and mm -hmm. like you know, every you know, basically because you know Edison did make films in the very you know, or, you know part of through part of way through his career. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he actually did a version of Frankenstein that is frankly quite good, mm -hmm. uh, and really I, is. I didn't know that existed, and mm -hmm. I have never seen it. Yeah, it's a always obviously it's a mm -hmm. silent film. Yeah, um, it's uh, fairly close to the book as well, and surprisingly has a lot of production value for what's you know. Probably didn't have a lot of money put mm -hmm. to it because it wasn't before there really was a film industry. Yeah, uh, but it is always considered to be kind of the first science fiction film because it's mm -hmm. it predates Metropolis. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so there you go. So yeah, okay. Schaefer, you have a very interesting answer there. Uh -huh. so I like that one. I do like that Kenneth Branagh version. Oh it. yeah, with Robert That's De Niro plays yes. the monster. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, let's see here. We got some other comments here. Dave Manningly uh, says that. Uh, his favorites are him about The Martian. Of course, that was turned into a movie with Matt Damon. Mm -hmm. um, Martians Go Home, which, you know, there's a theme here. Uh, <laughs> that I had to look that one up. That's a 90s film with Randy Quaid, but it was based off a 1954 book where basically you've got these Martians that come to Earth and they're, it, it's kind of a, a bit of a sci fi comedy, mm -hmm. but they come to Earth and they're annoying and, you know, like that. And so basically a music composer composes a song that basically drives them away. Oh. So, but yeah, so it's 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 a goofy little comedy. It was tra it's turned into a movie in the nineties. Well, that's Quaid. neat. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, play that song at the end of class. Let the kids get out. <laughs> <laughs> play, <Mighty. laughs> uh, And then, of course, last but not least, and one adaptation, I'm going to talk about the Lord of the Rings. Uh, it's a great segue. Thank you, Dave. So, yes, my next, first one I'm going to talk about is certainly. <laughs> I, I swear I'll stop doing that one day. No, it, it's, it's not it, today. It, it's always funny. It's always <laughs> funny. Uh, but yes, uh, The Lord of the Rings, uh, definitely one of my favorites uh, page to screen adaptations. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the, you've never seen the films. You, I've seen pieces of them and I just. This is not your thing. It's just not my thing. No, I appreciate it as a genre. But no, when I, whatever the one was where they fly and then the bird or whatever drops them and they're they can see i'm like why didn't the bird just take you all that's, the way that's there? The King, okay yeah. so i've seen parts of it and but yeah i'm glad you enjoy it <laughs> but what do you like the best about well, the book to the movie for me it just it brought everything to life i think peter jackson's translation was just you know spectacular mm -hmm. um it wasn't 100% accurate. There were changes there were things omitted uh some you know were thought to be controversial or whatnot but I don't necessarily have a problem with that because, you know, I know you can't do exactly everything and some mm -hmm. things need to be changed or whatever else. Yeah. Um, of course, for me, it was, you know, a film wrought with a whole lot of dudes and there weren't any ladies in it. Or there mm -hmm. was like a couple of ladies talked about a little bit or, you know, basically you had Galadriel. She had a big, she had some big parts and that was about it. So mm -hmm. like, all right, we got we to work, work some ladies in here too. So, <laughs> so like I said, yeah, then there were some changes that did have some controversy, but I think for me, it's just, you know, they were beautiful films. Mm -hmm. uh, the extended versions are, frankly, for me, the only versions uh, because you know they they make you know they make you stay longer. You know, because it's you know how long are those? Uh, let's see, the Fellowship of the Rings is like three and a half hours. 
uh, Two Towers is close to four hours, and then The Return of the King is a solid uh, four and change. Yeah. Beautiful. I'd rather put a campfire out with my face. Beautiful. There but I'm really stars. happy for you. They are really pretty. I, I do like the where they did the shooting and all the, mm -hmm. you know, the scenery, it's very pretty. Yes. I mean, you know, granted they did have, you know, they did do the Hobbit film, uh, films, you know, mm -hmm. they, where they turned, took three movies and, you know, out of one book. So I, I don't dislike those films, but I don't like them near as much as I like the mm -hmm. Like basically like the, the end of return of the King, I'm just crying like a baby when they're doing like, you know, you know, Everybody goes, you know, off into the the, the, the farther shore, the their their Avalon, you know, sort of thing like mm -hmm. that. And then as they're doing the credits and everything like that, you know, they're doing you know all these like sketches of all the principal actors and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Music's playing, it's like, yeah. So it gets me every time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it just it's such a just a, a, an amazing journey. Yeah. So yeah. They are really pretty. Uh let's see. We got some other comments here. What do we got here? Oh, Dave Manningly says he wants to see Tom Bombadil and Radag Radagast the Brown in Middle Earth, a Middle Earth buddy cop show. Those are obviously Roller Rings characters. Yeah, I'm just going to go, oh, I pretend I got that one. <laughs> uh, let's see. Jennifer uh, chimes in saying her support of Lord of the Rings, but says uh, beautiful films, but she always falls asleep during Two Towers and Return of the King. <laughs> yeah, you know, you have these games. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, you, I can, you know, I, I can see where you know, folks definitely you know, fall asleep. With it, but yeah, I, I love long films. Um, years ago, a uh, theater in Louisville, when Return of the King was just coming out to theaters, they showed theatrically the extended versions of Fellowship, Two Towers, and then the theatrical cuts, which is just under four hours uh, of Return of the King as like a marathon. Like all in a row? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, granted, they did breaks where you can, you know, go to the bathroom, walk around, get something to eat. Mm -hmm. They gave you about maybe like 30, 45 minutes, you know. It, but yeah, we were there all day. Oh my gosh. It was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was amazing. Because, yeah. of course, I mean, I was there with a whole bunch of Lord of the Rings fans. But right. yeah, I mean, it was, it was an unforgettable experience. Mm -hmm. You know, see, you know, the extended versions. Because I, I, you know, still haven't got to see the extended version of Return of the King theatrically, but at least I've got to see the other two. So mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Yeah, that is neat. Yeah. All right. So your next adaptation here. My next one is The Secret Life of Bees. Yep. I love this book. Mm -hmm. I have taught this book quite a few times. Um, I liked, well, first of all, I read the book. I had not read, I hadn't even really planned on teaching it. Mm -hmm. I just read it. Somebody said it was good. I read it. Right. I fell in love with it. This little character of Lily and how she is on this journey to try to find what happened to her mother. She lives with her dad. He's very abusive to her. Um, and she ends up uh, taking their maid, Rosaline, mm -hmm. on a little journey. And they end up in um, the place where these ladies live and they make honey. You know, well, the bees make honey, but they, they yeah. are beekeepers. Mm -hmm. And um, so the Boatwright sisters. Mm -hmm. And... I just wanted to be in that family right. when I read the book and there was just so many beautiful scenes and whether or not, I, I think whether or not you had any kind of trauma like that, you could identify with that longing for, you know, something that you're missing. Right. Um, so when they made the movie and you probably remember, we uh, went out to see it oh, yeah. and it was winter time and it had just happened to be a snow day. So I got on whatever messenger we used at that time and told my students, Hey, if you guys want to meet us at the movies, mm -hmm. we can go see this. And they were like, yeah. So like what, maybe 10 or so showed up. Yes. Not, like not a lot, but was maybe, quite a few. There was maybe like less than 20 of us. Maybe, yeah. You know, but yeah. And they were so mad all the way through. <laughs> They're like, that is not what August Boatwright looks like. She is older. What has happened? Mary Day, this like celebration that they have because they've kind of created their own religion, which mm -hmm. I think is beautiful. Um, it's a little bit of Catholicism, a little bit of Christianity, a little bit of paganism. It's just all kinds of mixed together mm -hmm. and it's really cool. Um, but like none of that celebration that they had was really included. It was just kind of glossed over. Um, mm -hmm. How some of the characters developed um, was a little different. So once I started to separate Okay, I love the book, and I can love the movie as mm -hmm. just its own entity. Yeah. Um, 
I liked that Sue Monk Kidd, the author, was very involved in the production of the movie. Right, yeah. So she worked with, um, I think it was Gina Prince Blackwood mm -hmm. that, that uh, directed it, and I love her. Yeah. I just think she is such a force. Um, but when they, the fact that they work together mm -hmm. and they kind of translate it, so they made the Boat Wright Sisters a little bit younger. Um, oh, what's her name? Uh, Alicia Keys. Oh, Alicia Keys. Alicia yeah. Keys is one of the sisters. Yeah, it's um, her and uh, Queen Latifah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. and then um, I can't remember the other lady's name that played um, the uh, other hey. the other sister. Let's see here. Oh yeah, the the, the other sister yeah, here. Sophie. Oh, I can't remember. But anyway, she's fantastic. They're all um, Jennifer uh, uh, Hudson. Hudson, thank you. Yeah, Dakota Fanning is yeah. yeah. Well, and in the in the book, Lily's got really dark hair and she's kind of scraggly looking. Mm -hmm. And then when the, my kids saw Dakota fanning, they were like, well, she's pretty that Lily's not supposed to be, you know, Lily doesn't recognize that she's beautiful. So mm -hmm. she's supposed to be like this kind of little mousy character. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what? uh, so once we started to separate yeah. one from the other, um, I appreciated that there was a lot more in the movie that people could identify with if they hadn't read the book. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and they do speed things up because they don't have 12 hours to, sure, yeah. you know, take them through the entire journey <laughs> of this story. <laughs> um, but I, I like, and I appreciate the changes that they made. Mm -hmm. um, but they just really stuck to the heart of the story, just how beautiful it is. And there's a line at the end um, that Lily in the book, and mm -hmm. she turns around and she's, um, sees all of her, these Boatwright sisters, and then all of their, like, church members. Mm -hmm. They're all standing on the porch and waiting for her. And, you know, she's now going to live with them forever. And right. she says, you know, I have more mothers than any 10 girls off the street or something like yeah, that. So, that line, yeah. yeah, so just that, the fact that everybody needs a mom and everybody needs a lot of moms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was just a really good, but if you haven't read the book, I highly recommend it, especially if you've seen the movie. Mm -hmm. um, it just has so much more detail about everything and awesome. makes you want to move to that town. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said it was a very you know good film. Of course, mm -hmm. it, you know it takes place in a time where there's still a lot of you know division, especially you know you know with color and everything like that. So yes. it takes place in the South. So you see a lot of that too. But then basically, once you get to the boat rice sisters, it can, it's like it's a whole another world. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. their own world they create, which is you know again it's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. So let's see, a couple more comments here. Uh, Dave Manley says that he was impressed with Watchmen's cinematography, but wouldn't call the film favorite. Uh, he missed the giant alien squid. Yeah, you know, I would say the same thing about, you know, there were a lot of things I liked about the Watchmen movie, but that book is so difficult to adapt. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's so many pieces and parts to it. I mean, granted, there's the superhero story, there's the murder mystery aspect to it, mm -hmm. but then there's also all the history of the heroes that came before, and then you're getting like uh, excerpts of the biography that the original Man Al wrote of his excerpts, you know, in the 50s and the 60s and whatever else, and how all the heroes were back then and how mm -hmm. life was, and basically there's a lot of good and bad in that. Uh, and then, of course, you've got also like this you know, there's a lot of the 80s red scare in the mm -hmm. book and the threat of nuclear disaster, the threat of nuclear war. And I guess there's a lot mm -hmm. of that going on, a lot of mistrust of the government and mistrust of other you know organizations and things like that. That's all in there. But then also, like, there's a kid at a newsstand reading a pirate comic book and the pirate comic book you see excerpts of and it's an allegory for everything. By the by, the time you get to the end of the pirate story, you're like, oh my god, this is painting everything that's happening in the book. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's just so brilliant. Yeah. And it's just like just covering it like a superhero movie and trying to get a little things there. It's like, yeah, you, you almost got there, Snyder. Yeah, almost there. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Dave Bentley also uh, chiming in saying uh, it's hard to call Avengers Infinity War an adaptation, but it was spectacular. It was. I mean, it's not you know. Infinity Gauntlet as we know it, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean Infinity War and Endgame—that's that's an amazing adaptation of the whole Infinity Saga there. So. Yeah, and of course I'm not a comic book fan, but I love those movies. Mm -hmm. I love the, and I'm not—I mean it's sad when people die, but that's just kind of how things go. And there's evolutions of the—I I, just—I love all those stories. Right, and even some of the moments that you know 
you know, when Cap gets to wield, you know, Molnir, and so that does a lot for comic book fans because we've seen that moment in the comics. But then for people who haven't read the comics, that calls back to Avengers too when they're yeah. all having the the contest to see who they got the Cap moves the hammer. Yeah, he doesn't pick it up; he just moves it. So, and you know, so was like. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you know, there, it's definitely not an according, to, you know, a direct adaptation, but it mm -hmm. definitely captures, I think, the story of it. Yeah. And of course, you know, a lot of the threat there. Uh, let's see, another adaptation: Paper Girls, Umbrella Academy, Last of Us. Yeah, that's of course mm -hmm. that's kind of what inspired it. We, I was talking about the Last of Us so much. Yeah, that's adapted from a video game. So yeah, so that's yeah, some interesting stuff there. So uh, one adaptation. I absolutely love it. it. Came out a few years ago, uh, the Strain series that was on FX. Oh yeah, I remember watching some of that with you. That was crazy. Oh my god, that was this, good. This was an excellent series. Of course, this is uh, oh, that guy. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what the that's what the vampires look like. Yeah, a big appendage thing that comes uh -huh. out, and yeah, it's gross. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, so these are based off the books by uh, Chuck Hogan and Guillermo del Toro, and then del Toro produced uh, the series as well. And he was See, we love all him. Them. Yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> we can't get this is a del Toro household here. We, <laughs> yeah. we love that dude. Uh, but yeah, so you know, there's three books in the series. The movie, uh, the the TV series was four seasons on FX, which uh, I believe they're all streaming on Hulu right now. So mm -hmm. I think they got all the rights to it right now. So that's yeah. that's the only place you can find it. But of course, uh, you know, buy the DVDs, but. It is a fantastic series that basically kind of get you've got the old world, ancient, thousand year old vampires versus modern day science. Mm -hmm. But then you also have the balance of the old vampire hunter thrown in the mix there as well. Uh -huh. So, but you've got this oh, how you know, you know, of course, this whole takeover of our planet by these vampires. It's kind of been whole orchestrated for a long time, kind mm -hmm. of unfolding, and there's a clips coming, and so that's helping out with them as well. Our main you know, protagonist works for the CDC, so there's all that in there. But of course, you've got like the old vampire hunter who he dates back to you know World War II because he was in a concentration camp and met a vampire there that was a Nazi soldier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got a lot of other characters in you know, the series as well that kind of all make up this like ragtag group of people that basically all end up, you know, fighting off the vampires, saving the world and everything. Mm -hmm. In the book, there are, you know, many of the characters are in there. There's a few that basically uh, the series kind of fleshes out a little bit more, gives them a little more to do mm -hmm. um, than some of the others. Um, but for the most part, you know, the series is very close to the books. Mm -hmm. So all the major events are in there, how certain things happen, twists happen, uh, the relationship between uh, the CDC uh, uh, agent and his son, who basically kind of hates him, mm -hmm. and you know, mom gets turned into a vampire, but she's still alive. Is kind of being used, you know, to basically lure the son away mm -hmm. from the, you know. So it, there, there's all kinds of stuff in there, but yeah, yeah. So it, yeah, it's just a fantastic series. Highly recommend checking that out. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Did you have any other adaptations? No, here? these were the only, these were my favorite two. Yes, definitely. Yes. Uh, one adaptation I got to talk about, of course, we've talked about this, uh, the last time we were talking about Last of Us here, mm -hmm. was we were talking about end of the world movies here is Richard Matheson's I Am Legend. Such a great story. Mm -hmm. Such a great story. Uh, now I've talked about how I haven't seen a perfect adaptation in mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. You know, granted, you've got the Vincent Price, Last Man on Earth. Uh, even, you know, uh, the Charlton Heston Omega Man borrows a lot from I Am Legend. Mm -hmm. Then you got the Will Smith movie. Uh, so there's a lot of things that, you know, I Am Legend has been adapted and turned into or kind of tweaked and everything from. Yeah. But there really hasn't been anything, like I said, in film or television that is a perfect adaptation. But there are comics. So, ah. yeah, there is a four issue series that uh, Eclipse Comics did in 1991. That, uh, of course, Matheson was involved in this one. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so Matheson was involved in this, but um, uh, it was also uh, adapted by Steve Niles. This was a couple of years before he did 30 Days of Night. Oh, I yeah. love that. So, yeah. Love so, that. and then um, uh, Elman Brown is the uh, artist on this one. Um, it's perfect. 
because it's you know a true adaptation from the book. They don't really change anything or modernize stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the art's in black and white, so it's very moody and dour and fits the mood of the book and the story. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't change the ending, thank God. So I mean, it's, it, it's it, like I said, it's a perfect adaptation of the entire story, but it's just, it's so well done. And just like I said, very, just, you know, it, it's not like a real heavy, you know, kind of like, you know, if you know, like Bernie Wrightson's art, uh, where he uses a lot of heavy inks. It's not, it's very kind of like a light, almost like a pencil drawing is mm -hmm. everything. Uh, but yeah, it just, it fits everything, but it's perfect adaptation. Yeah. So, yeah. So, cool. so there you go. So I th let's see, I think that's all my answers I've got up here, but yeah, we've got, we had uh, quite a few in here, but yeah. So yeah, uh, Dave Manley pointed out the paper girls, which that's on uh, Amazon. Uh, that was basically a comic series turn into a show mm -hmm. uh, basically about girls that they're all paper girls and somehow they get transported into like, I think like the early nineties or the eighties or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a mystery kind of weird series there too. Yeah. Um, but it only lasted one season. Umbrella Academy, which is on Netflix, obviously is a comic uh, uh, series based off the uh, Gerard Way series, mm -hmm. which the guy from uh, My Chemical Romance. Oh yeah. Yeah. He writes comics. Oh. Yeah, he's in Umbrella. He's he's done a lot of different books, but yeah, Umbrella Academy has been his biggest hit. Yeah, um, and then yeah, of course, Last of Us, based on the video game there. So, oh, Jennifer uh, is chiming in saying that she loves Outlander. Uh, if we're completing show adaptations, yeah. So there you go. So yeah, Outlander based off a series of books as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so you get a lot of you know strange yeah. historical romance. I think Iris wants to be on. The show. Uh, do you, you want to be on the show, Iris? No, nope, she's walking away. Oh. So all right, I guess not. <laughs> Sometimes the cats like to make their appearances. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised Karen Lamb's not here. She usually likes she's to. She's still asleep upstairs. Oh, okay, yeah, she's under the covers. <laughs> uh, Dave uh, has some other ones. Uh, the Born Identity. Oh, okay, yeah, there mm -hmm. he goes. Based on the series. Clue. Yes. Mm -hmm. That that you know to to turn a board game into a film, you can't get better mm -hmm. than Clue. Yeah. I, I I dare anybody to do anything better than that. I mean, I'd watch him shoot some ladders. Chase, I'm just kidding. That'd be, I don't know, that'd be more like a competition show or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> not, really shoot. Fun, not a fun game, so it probably wouldn't be a fun movie. I mean, it's great for little kids. Yeah, that's what it's built for. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, Ender's Game. Yep, definitely. Um, of course, yeah, that's a, yeah, an interesting kind of whole thing, you know, basically like children being militarized, essentially, and, mm -hmm. you know, all that sort of thing. So, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fight Club. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Definitely Fight Club. Yeah, and that's a really good book to screen adaptation. They mm -hmm. they they don't really change too terribly much. Mm -hmm. Chuck Palahniuk was very heavily involved in the film, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's a good one there. Uh, John Carter, yeah, we were talking about John Carter, yes, and then of course uh, also chiming in with the Phantom, uh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, John Pike had chimed in earlier uh, saying that his his support for the Phantom as well, and, uh, uh -huh. but yeah, uh, John Carter was a terrible tragedy of a promotion because. The movie is a great adaptation of the whole Princess of Mars, you know, stuff that Edgar Rice Burroughs did. Mm -hmm. You know, we got a Civil War hero trans, you know, transported to Mars, and basically he's now living amongst the Martians and mm -hmm. doing adventures and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, the, originally the people that were behind the movie at Disney were all into the movie, and then there was a whole firing and regime change, and mm -hmm. then the new regime came in, they didn't care a thing about John Carter, and they released it with a very lackluster trailer. Like, here it is. And, and of course, people didn't understand. They were like, oh, this looks like Dune. This looks like Star Wars. This looks like this and this. Like, yes, all that stuff mm -hmm. you mentioned is what it was inspired by John Carter Mars. Mm -hmm. you, you know, the, the Princess of Mars and all that stuff. It's like, Yes, mm -hmm. all that came from this because mm -hmm. this was written in like the forties, yeah. <laughs> or even earlier than that, maybe. So yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. So uh, it's sorry, right. yeah. Here it's always a. Let's relax. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing is, like, there some a fan made a trailer and put it on YouTube at the time the film came out, and it was a perfect trailer because it explains the whole history of who John Carter is and where these books came from and what they all inspired. Mm -hmm. You know, all the movies and franchises, you know, all came from the, you know, the, the series mm -hmm. and it, you know, shows scenes to the movie and what the plot's going to be. It's like, this is a perfect trailer. And how mm -hmm. is it that a fan can do this? And I mean, people raved about it. It, it was shared more than the actual trailers were, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, here we go. 
another Je Jennifer's got another good one there. Princess Bride. Yes. Yes. Oh. A another page to screen adaptation, mm -hmm. very beloved film, but yes, a, a, a very excellent. I would say almost that's probably, I would say probably one, probably the closest adaptation because I don't think they changed anything from the book. Mm -hmm. I think Rob Reiner was like t treated that thing like the Bible. Yeah. So oh, yeah, they didn't have a script; they just had the book. <laughs> such a great movie. Yeah, and big it, part of our childhood, you know. Very big part of many people's childhood. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, and of course, you, you know, hear all the actors talk about it so many years later. You know, thirty plus years later after the film came out, and how just how beloved that movie is by the people who made it still to this day, mm -hmm. and how much they long for going back to you know shooting those scenes. I mean, it, you know. Get on, Manny, get on Manny Patinkin's TikTok. He does like a lot of videos yes. of him talking. There's parts of him talking about that. I mean, he gets choked up talking about the movie. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like he did it so long ago, but it's like it's it meant so much to them doing yeah. that. So it was great. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, oh, <coughs> good lord. I'm choking on my own saliva. I'm going to choke on my own saliva here. <laughs> Oh, well, I think that's all we've got for this week here. But thank you guys for chiming in. And of course, thank you always for being on the show. With you, you are welcome. Thank I enjoy you. it. Yeah, well, of course, we enjoy having you guys on here and sharing, you know, your thoughts and uh, opinions as well on here. So mm -hmm. we always appreciate that. And of course, you know, like and share. Uh, we're on Facebook, and YouTube, and whatever else. So uh, next time, it's just going to be me on the Fanatic Forum uh, yeah. because we'll be live from Clobbering Comics. Uh, only because I'm working on a Friday night and closing the store, so literally I'll be turning the the, the key and then hitting uh, Start on your show. Hit, hitting broadcast on the show. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, so we'll get you, we'll get a tour around the shop, and of course we'll talk comics. We'll talk about new releases coming out because I've got to talk comics in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Here, so. so yeah, so we're gonna do that uh, next week on the Fanatic Forum. So you guys have yourselves a wonderful weekend. And we will leave you with a little word here from uh, Comic Books for Kids. But you guys take care on the Fanatic Forum. Bye-bye. Have a good night. Comic Books for Kids provides comic books to kids in hospitals and cancer centers across the U.S. It's a place where we can all work together to make sure every child has a comic book. 100% of all proceeds go towards the kids. It's about making a difference, and while they're in the hospital, allowing them to fly like a superhero, battle dragons, or rescue teddy bears. We are in every state in the country and now support over 160 hospitals. Every month, we add more. Visit cb4k.org.